Hi class, I wanted to give you a little bit more of an overview of our workflow, uh, workflow our uh, production pipeline, as it were, for creating our character. Now, when we're creating our character, uh, we're going to start off by creating our face first, creating the head first, and then we create the body. Okay. Now, what you're going to be doing overall is actually creating uh, your character and uh, we're going to be using Mudbox or, or um, ZBrush to be do a sculpting. So what you're going to be doing is inside of 3D Max or Maya, you're going to create what's called a base mesh. A base mesh is a basic, real basic mesh that then you're going to take that into your sculpting package to put all the detail in. Okay, now the directions that are on the uh, our AI online, if you're reading theirs, they're kind of doing old school. You know, back in the day, we used to do all of our uh, modeling inside of the 3D software, but nobody really does that anymore. What you do inside of the 3D software is create your base mesh, and then you do all your detailing inside of the uh, sculpting software, okay? So a typical thing on a face, on a head, would be like, this is what you're going to be sculpting, okay? This is your base mesh over here on the left. And then you're taking this into ZBrush or Mudbox, and then you're subdividing it. You can see here it's subdivision one, subdivision two, subdivision three. And then what's happening is, is as uh, this person is kicking in more subdivision, they're starting to sculpt, and you start a little bit at a time. So you start with the big areas, and then you sub divided again. And what's nice is when you're doing these subdivisions, you can put these on layers like in Photoshop, so you can toggle back and forth between these. And so on the lower subdivisions, that's where you're doing bigger changes, and then in the higher subdivisions, you're doing smaller changes, okay? And then we can add in all this small detail, the eyebrows and everything, until you get to this final one, okay? So you can get so much more detail in a sculpting package than you ever can inside of 3D Max and Maya, okay? Now, what confuses students is I've seen students when they get to this point, then they kick this model out of Max and or, or out of uh, ZBrush or Mudbox, and you don't do that. This is we're not building this model to kick this 3D mesh out. What we're doing is we're building this model to generate maps from this, normal maps, displacement maps from this. Then we take the maps and we apply them back to this bottom base mesh, and it will make the base mesh look like this one. If you brought this one into Max or Maya and you tried to animate this, this is a doorstop. This is millions and millions and millions of polygons, and it cannot be animated. We are generating this one to generate maps, displacement maps, ambient occlusion maps, uh, normal maps, and then we apply those maps back to this uh, base mesh over here. Okay, speaking of base meshes, on your faces, when I want you, now we got to get, there's basically two kinds of um, base meshes that you're building. One is a face base mesh, and then one is a body base mesh. When you're building the face base mesh, I will not accept anybody building it with a box modeling. Box modeling is horrible for face meshes. Every time I see students do it, they have horrible looking faces. You're going to do edge pulling. But what you want to do before you start doing that is take your drawings that you've done and do what this person has done here and come in here and just draw on top of those. Now you can scan your draw you can scan your drawing and draw on top of a pencil or a marker, or you can do it uh, 3D in Photoshop and draw on top of it with a tablet. I don't really care. But you can see what we're trying to do is generate uh, edge flow on the face so that it can be animated properly and that it'll subdivide properly, okay? We want loops around the mouth, loops around the eyes, okay? And somewhere you end up putting a pole. This is a pole right here. Everybody will have a pole somewhere on their face. That is a five-sided vertex, okay? You're going to be, you'll have a pole on your face. This is a great example of how your polygon should flow. So if you draw these on your drawing before you put it on your construction plane when you're building your model, then it's pretty easy because you're just, making these quads, and then you're sculpting them three-dimensionally, okay? Here's another example of one. This one's pretty good, too, okay? See, there's your pole right there. It's a little bit higher up on the face on this one, but that's okay. So we've got loops, 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 loops around the eyes, okay? Loops around the face, okay? 
Now you see this little small little cut they put in here. You don't need to put that in. You don't need to be building eyebrows in here because all of that will be put in inside of a mud box or ZBrush. Okay. Here's a really good example of a uh, base mesh ready to go into uh, ZBrush or mud box. Okay. Into your digital sculpting package. See loops, 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 loops around the eyes. Uh, there's your pole. Okay, everybody will have a pole. It'll be somewhere. Sometimes they're out here. It's okay, but this is what a good base mesh. Now, what you're trying to do is to get your polygons all about the same size because when you're subdividing them, we don't want some really small ones and some really big ones, so we want them about the same size. Okay, so that's what you guys are going to be working on this week is you're going to be working on getting a good flow to your uh, face that you're doing. Now, some of you are doing little dinosaurs and stuff. It's still, you still do it the same way. Okay. All right. Then eventually we'll get off to body, doing bodies. Now, this is a good example of a base mesh for a body. Now, forget the heads because you're going to be doing and adding detail in your heads. It'll be separate, and then we'll stitch it in later. But this is a good example of a good base mesh. There's a male mesh. Here's a female mesh. You're trying to get all of your polygons approximately of the same size. Now, yes, in the fingers and the toes, they'll have to be a little bit smaller, but you're trying to make it so that it's pretty much the same. So as we subdivide it, you have the same amount of detail anywhere on the body, okay? So your workflow would be that we build the base mesh, okay? Then we're going to take the base mesh in, and we're going to do sculpting in here, okay? Here's a uh, body sculpt here. There's your base mesh. Starting to subdivide, adding in detail, higher subdivision, adding in detail. And like I said, we're not kicking this model out. It's going to be back on this model, okay? We're just creating our, um, we're going to generate maps from this, okay? So what we're going to do is we'll uh, come down. Now, this, this, I've got this pen in here, and this one's pretty good. It's a little old, okay? Uh, so it's not exactly what we're doing, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Okay, and then you see there's the head that I pulled out of here. Okay, and um, okay, so he's here's his final sculpted mesh in ZBrush. I think he's using ZBrush. 7.3 million uh, polygons in this thing. Okay, that's we can't animate that, but this is a nice sculpt, and then we're going to generate maps from that to bring back out. Okay, now here he's building a base mesh. Uh, you've already got your base mesh built, but sometimes we need to retopologize because we may have altered it some, but um, we could go over that later. Okay, so here's his final base mesh that he's bringing in, and really this is a base mesh for uh, a game, for low poly in a game, and we're not necessarily having to do that. Now, you will have to unwrap your head and your uh, body eventually. Your unwrapped head, wrapped head should look something like this, okay, where you've unwrapped the head. Okay, and you'll want to do that before you take it into ZBrush or Mudbox. So your flow, your uh, production should be you build the low poly base mesh, then you unwrap the mesh, then you take it into ZBrush or Mudbox. Now here we go. Uh, See, so we're generating normal maps. Okay, this is the detail that this is a map. That's a special kind of map that will put three dimensional detail on our model. So you're generating this out of Mudbox or ZBrush, and then you're going to bring it back in. It's an AO pass. <clears throat> then you'll also be doing your texturing. Okay, and you'll be bouncing your texturing some in Photoshop and some directly in ZBrush or Mudbox. You can do three dimensional painting in there. It's very powerful. Okay. <clears throat> so, eventually, this is what it's going to look like. This is the low poly model with the uh, projections back on it. I know this looks like the high poly model, but this is not the high poly model. Let's go back over here to the high poly model. Okay, let's put that in a tab. Okay, while well, that's loading. Okay, so, and then once you get the uh, low poly model and you've got all the projections on it, okay, then you can project your textures. And so this looks really dynamic, but this is the, this is the lower poly, the base mesh, with those maps generated off the higher mesh and projected back onto it, okay? Now, uh, a good example is Jeremiah Bigley. This is one of my students, and this is a little uh, rat character that he built. Okay, and this looks pretty good, but 
and I'll put a link to this over so you guys can go over and look at his work, but if you put your mouse over, there's his base cage. Okay, now that's his final base cage, and you'll see it's triangles and it's not quads, and the reason it is is because that's ready to go in a game, and when you go into game, everything's uh, triangles because we're not subdividing anymore, and so that's why this one's triangles, so don't let that throw you off. Yours will be quads because we're not necessarily taking ours into a game. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is already posed. Now, when he built it, we can go down here. Uh, he built it like this, a relaxed T-pose. Got a relaxed T-pose here. This is what you're going to be building. And uh, that's how it, what he sculpted it, in a relaxed T-pose. Okay, then uh, and there's his reference that he went from. So he's doing basically the same thing you are. He went out and found a piece of concept art. And then uh, he built from there. Okay, and here he is building his base mesh. And then he's, take, he's showing you where he's taking it in, subdividing, starting putting his detail in. Okay, this is where he's um, showing his low poly uh, cage and then subdividing, putting his detail in there. This is his low poly. Um, and then he's, here he is, and you're going to be doing this too. He's come down and he's created bones inside of it so he can pose it. And then you pose it in some kind of stance and then you put it on a base. Okay, so that, then you're going to light it, stage it so it looks nice. So then in the end, you get something like this. And then you're going to be rendering it from several angles. And that's our goal. So our goal is to build it, low poly, base mesh, take it into ZBrush or Mudbox, detail it, generate maps out, surface it. Then we're going to stage it. And then it'll be on a base. You'll need to have, you're going to build some kind of a, a tool, asset or something that it'll be holding or is in the scene somewhere. And uh, that'll be the final thing that we're doing. Okay. So that's the overview of what we're going to be doing. So the first thing we're doing right now is we're working on the base mesh for the head. Okay, we've got to get good poly flow. I do not want box modeling for this. I put some tutorials in there for you to follow. We're edge pulling, so we're building a polygon and we're pulling edges and making strip loops to get this. Now, when you get to doing the body later, okay, that could be box model. I don't have a problem with box modeling for the body. That's okay. I just don't want the head to be box modeled, okay? So we're going to be building the head. Then we'll shift into building the body. Then we're going to be taking the whole thing into ZBrush or Mudbox to do our detailing, okay? Then we will kick the out. You'll need to, uh, before, matter of fact, I, people get confused on this. We want to do our unwrap prior to going into ZBrush, prior to going to Mudbox. You want to do your unwrap, then take it into Mudbox or ZBrush, and then start doing your sculpting, okay? Doing our head sculpting and body sculpting, and then we're going to kick out the maps, bring them back in to put them on top, then we'll pose them, and, uh, and then we'll live happily ever after. Okay, that's what we're going to be doing. Okay, thank you very much.